Well, it has certainly been a long time. In fact, it is bonfire night. It is time to do some playing of roles. Yes, it's always a perfect time to record something like this with explosions in the background. It might actually explosions. be fitting. Explosions. But it is, a uh, it is Traveller. The sci-fi game of travelling through the stars and space, blowing things up, talking to other things, fleeing from other things, trading in mathematics. They're all looking forward to that bit. Yeah. Guardian, you must bring the traveller back and defeat the darkness. By wrong, game. Wrong, wrong, wrong game. Thing. Wrong game. Wrong game. Wrong game. Oh, sorry. I will introduce the players by letting them introduce themselves. Lazy. Okay, fine. Hello. My name is Carl. I hang around with these people, and I will be playing the role of Yaland Jones. I believe you were going to use another word that started with P there. And no, I am Ollie. No. I will be playing the role of Edwin Mann. <laughs> nice. Composure, people. Composure. Well, <laughs> my name is Kleiker. And I totally forgot to come up with a name for my character, so oh, I'm just gonna Jesus. come. You're with not that right defaulting now. to Kleiker, I will oh, shit. <laughs> shit. So he's gonna be called my character is <laughs> gonna be called Kleiker Kleikerson. No, he's Fuck. not Ollie. He's not going to be called Kleiker anyway. Kleikerson. Alright, I'm gonna come up with a name for him. Soon. Okay. You don't have to think about you don't have to come up with one immediately. He's a just space gonna... accountant. He doesn't need a name, he just needs his numbers. And That's finally, a... but by no means leastly. Oh, that's me. That is you. I'm uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm the Rupert. I play uh, Conard the Space Barbarian. He is indeed. And I will and I will mute my phone. Conard. Tra uh, the Traveller <laughs> is a game that combines um, various sci-fi things of traveling through the stars, trading, diplomacy, space combat, high adventure, low adventure, and low mathematics. Low adventures. Hopefully the group is not going to delve straight into the mathematics, as that will make it interesting. But um, this session begins in the, uh, I must say, non-canonical subsector map that I've created. It's uh, You won't find it anywhere in uh, any of the source material, because I made it up. You will, of course, helpfully provide a link for... Map. I will actually it's provide, a, up. I will actually provide a link up. to the system. Good oh, really? man. But the, um, <clears throat> the play today begins in the system of Esal, specifically on the uh, planet Leorm. And on the planet Leorm, Yaland has been has received a message from his old friend and longtime ally, Cassine Talay. Cassine Talay is a man who, um, in um, Yaland's youth, in his career as a diplomat for the uh, Leorm governments, they uh, formed a close um, political bond and have been firm friends ever since. Recently, Yaland will note that he came back from an assignment of four years long and he doesn't have a job anymore. His position mysteriously closed when he came back, for reasons he doesn't know. Mm. And his old friend Cassine has asked to see him on his estate. This is the uh, this is the old friend of mine that is quite frail and of ill health. Yes. Yep, that's the one. He's mm. very ill. He wasn't of ill health before he left for his trip. No, he wasn't actually. He mm. wasn't. This is a recent thing. Yes, it's a real shame to see him pushed around in a wheelchair these days. Are you actually going to accept the mess the invitation to see him? Of course I'm going to accept the invitation to see him. He's an old friend. You are provided with a uh, transportation to um, a chauffeur comes to pick you up. You're five minutes late. It's a robot. It doesn't say anything in reply. Is it a Johnny Cab? No, it isn't. It doesn't Good. speak back. Uh, Good. Compute, um, basically, um, unlike in most other science fiction settings, uh, AI is pretty illegal, like true AI. So it's not going to provide you with any meaningful conversation. Would you it like is. to play an electronic game? Abuse Off it. Chance. No, I would not. Just take me to the uh, residence of Cassine to lay and make it snappy, please. Mm, it drives you. It's not a long or eventful journey. It drives you out of the uh, the city. 
down some winding paths and eventually up to the uh, gates of the estate, where you are met by Cassin Talay. Ah, Cassin, it's good to see you, old friend. Cassin, I'm, I'm sorry to see you in such a state. Cassin is not looking well. Uh, Cassin was not wheelchair bound when you left for um, your assignment four years ago, and he had more hair on his head. It's thinning a bit, but he does have the the smile and posture of a man who still still has the pride of his job or what was his job he hasn't worked for a longer than you have he uh, greets you with a smile the orderly behind him just nods politely ah and i nod back ah yeland my friend it's good for you to come at such short notice well i i got your message it sounded urgent i, I... <clears throat> came as fast as I could, but the uh, the public transportation on this world is less than uh, ideal. There have been budget cuts, yes. I'll have to talk about Yes, them. I know. I had something to do with them. <laughs> anyway. Mm, yes. Well, walk with me, will you? Certainly. Despite the fact that he can't walk, you, uh, <laughs> he is um, pushed around in his uh, quite vast and extremely elegant garden it's uh you've been to his place once before it is quite a veritable um near palace but not you know that his family was of money not as well, much of money anymore well Cassine, i see the uh i see the residence has been kept well in your absence uh, yes yes a bit of dust everywhere though but that's not what i asked you to come here for what? oh go uh, on Please. Well, you know I'm not well. It's pretty it's, serious. It's very apparent, yes, I have to say. It's poisoning, actually. Damn. Yes, uh, I should hopefully improve in time, but it, it's a long process to rid it entirely. It's a genetic poison, so... That's why I... I thought those were illegal. They are. Well, this changes things. Not, not, that's not your concern, Matt. What? Then, then why did you call me here? What? The very fact that I'm wheelchair-bound and pretty much a state-bound means that there are things that I need to do that I cannot. I am bound to here and the machines that are slowly working towards my he my good health, and unfortunately the work that I do, despite being retired, does not go away. Well, um, you always, you've helped me much in the past. I can only hope that I can repay the favor. How can I help? Ah, yes, I was hoping you might say that. He smiles and uh, brings up a... Um, he reaches into his pocket weakly and brings out a small computer... Um, tablet. He brings out a very long list. He starts scrolling through it. It's various appointments and meetings and dinners and all sorts of things. Like, this is the typical schedule of me. Mm. And I'm not asking you to fulfill all of it. Most of it is formalities, trivialities, pleasant hearsay and polite chit-chat between diplomatic peoples of yes. non-issueness. Yes, yes, of You course. know all about that. Yes, yes. There are, however, urgent and more pressing things that I do need looking into, and I can't do them. Uh, I'm basically a... It's, oh, it's, it's difficult. He Come on, Cassine, we're, we're old friends, you can tell me. I need you to go and do them for me. Well, of course, that would obviously depend. I have commitments on this world, and other worlds. I need to... I need details, Cassine. Details. I can only provide details if you're willing to accept. <laughs> of course. Of course, I trust you. Good. That, that might be useful one day. <sighs> All is not as well in the ESAL system as you might think it is, but... That's a diplomat's job, to find out that sort of stuff. But for now, there are a few minor things I need clearing up. 
a little bit of paperwork, so to speak, a bit of paper trail finishing. I need you to get in contact with a colleague of mine. The problem, Carry on. The problem is with him, uh, Henningham. He's very, very paranoid. Henningham? Henningham. You won't have heard of him. He's a... Uh, not a, a diplomat, or anyone of any position or station. He's very paranoid, and by paranoid I mean you will not get him on inter in intrasystem communication. He doesn't have one. So I have to see him personally, is what you're saying? You do. You Where do. is he? Well... He doesn't tend to actually stay on world. Right. He's in system. Right. And, and that's actually about as much as I can tell you. Huh. You ponder briefly, I imagine, the vastness of space. Even in a solar system. <laughs> you not have any kind of a breadcrumb trail I could follow? Anything? Any clue at all? He's not around this planet, I'll tell you that much. Well, his his hmm. ship is uh, not visible. Well, I... I had some vacation time I was planning to use. I just didn't think I'd be using it for something like this. But if it's for an old friend, I'll do it. I'm going to cut the chase with you here. I know you were laid off. Uh, I wasn't going to be the first to say it. Yes, I heard about it. Slightly underhand business, if you ask me. Yes. Well. That's kind of why I, I called on you. I thought you could use the income. Your pension's not going to keep you in your standard of living, is it? Especially not I, especially not since I've been technically retired at the age of 38, no. No, no. The caveat of this is that I'm going to unfortunately need you to make an investment. Go on. I had to sell my spaceship a while ago to keep the estate in order. So I no longer have a ship myself for you to borrow. Hmm. And I... Uh, you're going to have to buy one. Well... I'm not working right now. I, my pension's not going to last forever, as you say, and if... and if what I can do can help you and possibly lead to a better situation for both of us, then... I'm willing to do what it takes. And I'm also will, and I'm not doing this as an act of charity. I am willing to reimburse you for your, your time and your effort. Well, thank you, thank you, Christine. But we can sort that out if you, when you have a ship, and a well, crew. A crew? You will need a crew, I imagine, unless you're uh, planning on piloting it solo. Hmm. Okay, fine. Fine. A crew. How many do you think I'll need for the ship I need? Depends entirely on the kind of vessel you're looking for, but... Mm. Well... There must be people you know. There are... Yes. Yes. There are There are a few names that spring to mind. I, I give you that. Well, you provide me with them, and I'll get in contact with them for you. I could do that. Well, there's this uh, crazy man called... Uh, Man. Well, it's funny, actually. A crazy man called Man. And Edwin it, Man. And it is at this point that we're going to cut to Edwin Man. <laughs> See? What are you currently doing? Uh, probably right now I'm chilling in a bar. My stuff, all equipment I have, is currently in a, in a um, storage locker. I'm just chilling about, really. Ah, you're living the high life, then. Yeah. How drunk that. are you? Tipsy, but not overly. Right. The actual thing that, um, I'm going to say that the reason why you're actually in this bar is you're waiting for your girlfriend, and she hmm. hasn't shown. Shit. Yes. I like her, she's very punctual. Yes, your, um, your long-time relationship has, uh, been going... You've not seen very much of her recently, actually. Mainly your fault, that one, with your work. Well, but you've to but you've now stopped working. It's to be expected. Yeah, the the attitude and the um, attitude and atmosphere of this bar is actually quite lively and uh, jovial, and quite orderly, which is a bit odd oh. for some of the bars you frequent. 
Yeah, I'm not complaining. It's a nice change of character. You get the, the bartender come up to you and uh, tap you on the shoulder. You right? I've got a call here for you from some... Old geezer. Old geezer? He didn't say his name, said it was important. Something to do with, uh... Yeelan Jones or something. Ah, uh, Yeelan, I've heard of him. Diplomat, yes. Yeah, pass it through. All right. He gives you... Bring it back, will you? It costs a pretty penny. Yeah, sure. There is a uh, an old-looking man on the uh, on the other side. He goes, "Ah, uh, you um, man, Edwin, man, at your service." Oh, How good. You? You, 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 you. Um, I'll pass it over to uh, Yaland. Ah. The picture then moves over to Yaland. I give him a friendly wave. There's someone I haven't seen for a long time. Ah, oh, good evening, get? Edwin. I see you've managed to find another bar to crawl into yeah it's not too bad you know music's good people don't break bones often not too i don't mind well i doubt they'd start trouble with you you're still carrying around that grenade launcher aren't you what you mean cindy yeah i, I keep cindy close by i thought have... cindy was the name of your last girlfriend have you been doing no, no, no. that you oh okay you haven't seen um man by the way yet and since uh since you returned back from your assignment, he his ship was the one that took you there. It wasn't the one that brought you back. Mm, ah, yes, I remember the day you dropped me at the Variety Homeworld. It's about a good couple Not of years ago. Not the Variety Homeworld, for right. reference, but it is a yeah. Variety World. Variety World, I apologise. Yeah. It's a good yeah. couple of years ago. How did that turn out, anyway? Very well, actually. I made some good contacts there, some of which I'm still in contact with today. But, that's, again... Um, Let's not talk about the past. Um, Fair enough. I need, I need your help. With what? An old friend of mine. Um, the old man that you just saw a moment ago, actually. Mm -hmm. He's rather he, ill. He is, yes. Mm -hmm. um, he requires me to find someone for him. And since I know that you are available right now, I, I would tell you this. I can tell by the fact that you're just sitting in a bar with, let me count, eight empty glasses in front of you. Yeah, it's a slow day. Hmm. But yes, I digress. No, I yes. assume that you have nothing pressing at the moment. And uh, go on. Well, I was going to say at the moment, at this very moment in time, I'm waiting for someone. But in general, no, I'm fairly free these days. Hmm. I wonder what this one's called. Anyway, um, we need to find someone, Edwin, and we need to get a ship in order to do so. And Go I want you to join the crew, much to my chagrin, but uh, I digress. You're the only, you're the, you're the first person that I have contacted of the three that I know. Okay. So, what do you say? Mm, yeah, go on then. Sounds like a good bit of fun. As my tr tr trigger you don't want to know any more details? You just... Well, let me put it this way. Am I going to shoot things? Yes, most then likely. why would I say no? Very well. I will, I will inform Edwin. Uh, I will okay. inform Cassin. Sorry. Ah, looking forward to hearing from you then, soon enough. Thank you. Okay, at which point I would close the... Um, Communicator, hand it back to the bartender, and order another round. You're ordering another round. Right. <laughs> there is only one other person you know, uh, Yaland, actually. There isn't three. There's only two. Really? Because you don't have a direct actual connection with, uh, with, uh, Conard. Conard? Oh. <laughs> well, shit. Okay. Fine. So... Um, you do, however, have a connection with Glyker's character. Who, by the way, is named Michael Bolton. <laughs> Space him right fucking now, out the airlock. <laughs> we don't even, we don't, we don't even have a ship yet, but I agree. <laughs> uh, let's just, let's just find done. a ship. And it's attempt. done. It's Michael Bolton. It's done. It's done. Okay. 
So, um... <laughs> Michael just, Moulton. Just, just, just reverse it, yeah, Michael Bolton. Do it. Okay, Michael Mo Moulton. Michael Moulton, do it, yes. Michael Moulton, fine. <laughs> Michael Moulton, every time someone calls me Michael, I'll be like, it's... Michael? Anyway, <laughs> so... Is there anyone else you might know? It's basically like Ocean's Eleven. How many people do you know? I know about two. <laughs> as, I clo as I close the communicator down after speaking with Edwin, I turn to Cassine and he says to me... Is there anyone else you might know? There is one other, but I'd have to see him in person. Would you? Yes. Oh. I can... We can arrange that. Yes. If you can, if you can arrange transportation here, that would be the most convenient. Yes! Where, where'd you want it to go? Well, the last I heard... Actually, um... Last you heard? Where were you last time, Michael? <laughs> Michael. Um... I at my desk. In my office. Where I'm always. You got Not... fired, remember? Then I'm probably at my house, at my desk, in my office. Okay, he's at his house. <laughs> he's made a, a desk out of cardboard boxes <laughs> as he's sitting in this alleyway trying to do accounting. No, on it's, it's not. A really it's not nice, much. It's not much. Super expensive it's not desk. much. It's not much. It's not much directions to go on. I can't really say to him. He's at his house, at his desk. You in know his where office. he lives. <laughs> I can't carry the three with you. Had, you had to go there to get the lessons. From Kiko, him. how much did my desk cost again? Like fifteen thousand credits. A lot of money. A lot of credits. He's got a very. You know where he lives. Yes. You can. You can. Uh... I will give you the details as to his address, Cassine. You can hand it to your driver. Just be aware that he's quite eccentric. He spent fifteen thousand credits on a desk, of all things. I spent twenty thousand on one once. It's a nice desk. I'm saying nothing. What are you up to at um, half ten in the evening, Michael? Well, I'm sitting at my desk and I'm kind of sorting out my financial situation, which I have right now, because I'm pretty sure that I have to get new insurance because insurance doesn't come from my corporation. Your anymore. financial situation, I might inform I'll have you. To, I'll have to. I'll have to get some new insurance. I mean, the insurance margins right now. If I get new insurance now, that should be like, cut, that should I will cover cut a you lot off here, Michael, and inform so you. Numbers. I will cut you off here and inform you that you don't need a wizard computer to find out that your current financial situation is bleak. <laughs> well, it's I mean the numbers might be small, but if you look at them from another angle, they might oh. be a little bigger. I could oh, bigger. Oh no! Them, get it's like a regular financial Oh no! You, you can try and kid yourself, but it's bleak. You are kind well, you of can't kid the numbers, and the numbers aren't kidding with me. So no, they're not. The numbers are telling you if you don't find a source of income soon, you're doomed. <laughs> well, but what it, what what counts as a source of income? I have to know. I, I have to know. Is it a proper source of income? Is it? I can't do black market. If I do black market, I can't pay Michael tax. Michael here is engaging tax. in a ridiculous amount of fourth walling, uh, uh, debating with the game master. <laughs> Michael's. <laughs> it is at this point that you hear from the inside Michael talking to himself, Yaland. I can't see the numbers. Ding dong. The doorbell's ringing, Michael. Is, wait, did ding someone ding just say that? Is that like a computer? Did, did my desk just tell no, me no, no. that the doorbell? He, he, he had to sell the fancy ding dong. It just goes ding dong, now. ding dong, ding dong, ding dong. Oh well, what uh, is, is is that? Is, is is it my phone? I pick up the phone. I go hello. This is Michael Bolton speaking. Nope, it's actually the door. Because I'm like not used to anymore. Yeah, it's, it's like, actually the door. Is there a mic? Is there? I, 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 I send the phone down. I send the phone. Down, I shout like Jenny, Jenny, get it. Excuse me. Is there a mic? Is there a mic, Jenny? Is there a Michael Bolton in there? You also realize that you no longer have a secretary because you were fired. I, I, uh, I slump back in my chair and I go... <sighs> right. You notice, Yeland, Michael hasn't actually locked his door. <sighs> if I don't have a secretary, then... Break, breaking, uh, breaking out for a moment, I'm actually picking him up myself. I've, I've accompanied the driver to pick him up. That's probably the oh. best thing. Okay. Is that what we're doing? You I'm say, just kind of slumping you say, back. You mentioned, that, you, say that you mentioned that Yaland has noticed the door's not open, so Yaland is there. Yeah, you've arrived at this point. I, I, okay, yeah. You so, are there. You are see, I gave, I gave, the wind from his open door just to travel all I his gave, files. I gave the directions to the driver who drove me there to yep, pick up. Yeah, you're already there. Michael. Yeah, you are there. Michael, I know you're in there. It's a voice you recognize. I, I know that voice from somewhere. Who's that? Michael. What are you doing in my office? <laughs> Your house is just one big room. My house is one big room? My house? 
you said you said you had an office in a house. I, I do walk have an in. office in a house. Yeah, it's you walk in. It's, yeah, I walk in. It's literally just the entire room. It is. He has when when um, Michael talks about a house, he's actually talking about a single one room, like a big one room apartment. It's, it's a one room apartment. But yeah. it is entirely almost o- um, occupied. There's a bed. There's his desk. There's some fr- stuff for food, a chair, and nothing else. Nothing else. It's literally just that. Nothing well, else. I see your uh, I see your living as I peer around the room. I see your living standards haven't improved. You still haven't got a toilet installed. Well, you know how it is with working conditions. I mean, I keep telling the office to install something, but they never send the plumber down here, and I don't know why. Ah, uh, but I suppose that desk takes care of it for you, though, doesn't it? Well, the desk is uh, does a lot of things for me. It yes, is but a what, very. What brings you here? I thought I I I didn't know. Did we have an appointment? Did we ever have an I appointment? Come offering... Was the last time we had one? Many years ago, but I digress. Was it years ago? I don't know. I don't know. I like it was a fair while ago, actually. Jenny would know. Jenny, could you look up when I lost last saw Galen? You're the only one here. There's a balloon. Well, well Jenny is There's the a other balloon. Ones. There's a balloon in the corner no. of a wig. No, he's just actually talking to no one. Oh, all right. You're wondering. There's, there's no one else here, Michael. Oh, right. Yes. I guess she took the day off. It was today her son's birthday? I don't know. Anyway, Yalen, what can I do for you? I'm You're finally interested in that insurance I've been pestering, I mean, uh, telling you about for the last few years? I'm going to cut to the chase, Michael. You look like you need employment, and I'm here to offer it. Define employment. We need to find someone. I don't know where this person is. I don't even even, even know if they're on this planet anymore. Do you know if they have insurance? <laughs> They're probably going to need it, from the sound of things. Oh dear, we have a man who drinks a lot, a diplomat, and a man who's slowly going mad. Well, I mean, if you need to sell insurance, I mean, I'm your guy. I mean, I've been in selling insurance. I mean, I'm still selling insurance. Michael, so. Michael, Michael, we have to find a man, and we have to sell him insurance. Are you in? <laughs> I am in. Fantastic. Wait, the... d- wait, 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 do we travel? Is this about traveling? Are you some kind of traveler? <laughs> Is this the part oh. where like someone shouts out in the movie theater? Movie theater. Oh, he said the title. He said the title. Wait, the credits are gonna roll. <laughs> um. Well, first of all, we need to find a ship. Wait, the ship? That means off-world travel. Off-world travel means higher margins. Okay. You just contact me when you uh want to uh find that insurance less man life without insurance terrible life. You. You By the way, you're going to be introduced to someone soon. He's, uh... Well, I suppose you two will get along quite well, actually. Uh, I, oh, another insurance salesman? I love meeting people. Thank you, Galen. Well, you always put no, business opportunities no, he's not, I stand up and I shake and start, an insurance I start salesman. shaking Galen's hands, like, very strongly. Yes, yes, uh, yes. He's not quite an insurance salesman, but believe me, anyone he comes into contact with will need insurance. Oh, I get it. You vacuum salesmen. Love right. those guys. We'll cut this scene at that point <laughs> and get a bit of time going. Pretty much, now there's three of you, you are eventually assemble. <laughs> I'm not it's sure if I feel <laughs> very assembled. Is it too late to add a conch horn to my eye list of uh, items? You can get one along the way. Ooh, assemble! Boo. But um, you assemble, and there is something that you assemble in um, <clears throat> Kasei's um, estate, and there is something what you have your reactions to meeting each other, specifically while both you, both um, Man and uh, Baikal know Yaland, you don't know each other. Edwin? I would like to introduce you to Michael. Michael ah. Moulton. Hi, my name's Michael. Michael Moulton, insurance right. salesman. Twenty years in a row. Best yeah, insurance right. in town. If you need insurance, man, I've got insurance for you. Yeah, n- nice to meet you, Bike. I'm on. I'm Edwin. No, no, it's it's Michael, but you can call me Bike. Okay, Bike. Yeah, cool. Um, I don't need insurance, but whoever the person we're looking for might. You haven't thought um, about insurance. Got it. I mean, don't need it. I. Michael, hate... Michael, he thinks about insurance every single second. Let's get on with this, shall we? I like this man. So you have you brought two other people with you. That's good. 
Hmm. Yes, uh, Cassine, this is uh, this is Michael Moulton, an insurance salesman. Mm. Yeah, don't, don't this man ask. is already in a wheelchair. I don't think he want to sell him insurance. I think he already has enough insurance, Michael. Oh, okay. And Cassine, this is a uh, man, Edwin Man. You spoke to him on the phone briefly. Yeah. Ah, man. ah, right, excellent. I've. Where's the muscle? Wait, what? Well, far have be it from seen, me. Have you not seen the grenade launcher strapped to man's back? Yes. Um, can I ask a referral question? Mm -hmm. When was the last time you saw a grenade launcher used in internal ship combat? Oh, I saw that in oh. 19... <laughs> in, uh, in it happened Planet once. I was very happy to be wearing a vac suit. Yes. My, pe my face dark, my your, face pale. Your insurance friend will have no problem uh, re probably recalling the uh, internal ship explosion cases he's had to deal with. Oh, yeah, those were terrible. Grenade launchers on ships, always higher margins, always higher margins. Love to sell to soldiers. Mercenaries too, good. So, so you're saying we need muscle? I'm saying you probably would require... Uh, recommendation. You might require someone more suited to the non-gun combat, which at this point, in your mind, man, you can My only think pales. of one man crazy enough to go with you. My face pales at the very thought. Oh, man, good God. Man, are you okay? Uh, the colour just drained from your face. What is it? Um, I, I sit down on a nearby bench and go, I know someone. Um, well, go on, man, spit it out. The man it goes by the name of Conard, I'm sure if you guys have ever heard of him. Well, whilst I was serving in the Navy, we had a bit of a kerfuffle, I should say. Basically, he is a barbarian. We he shall... was drafted, uh, and he may have caused large amounts of ship explosions. Mainly should... his own. We shall cut. Shouldn't take barbarians. Never barbarians. We shall Try cut. to explain insurance to them. Don't understand it. We, sh we shall cut to the desert world of Kamimu. Kamimu. Where? Lord. Where? <laughs> <laughs> where your tr your um nomadic tribe have been summoned to the one um to to the settlement. It's called the settlement because it is the only permanent settlement of your um of your that's where, indigenous that's where dad is. That's isn't it? where your dad lives. Correct. Yeah. You've actually been summoned by him. The journey took a fair while. And when you eventually get yes. there, you, Conard, encounter Conard. your encounter your dad, Almen Almenkar. Missing one arm, and only having half of uh, a leg at the knee with a crude prosthetic. Even by your world standards, he is very, very old. He's also one of the few people you know that actually has a communication system capable of communicating off-world. And I gave to him, I'd like that. Yes, you did. Oh, not did. Eh. You, you greet your father. I imagine. Father! Cold heart! <sighs> Looks up. Dad, over here. Uh, uh, oh, yes. Oh. He slowly walks himself over. Greetings! Welcome oh. back, my son. It has been long since I've seen you last, like the whispering sands of the eternal dunes of dreams. Yes. You you got my message, I take it, that I needed to see you. That's why I'm here, Dad. There oh, is... Hey, I strode across the dunes to meet you, Father, <laughs> on your summons. Ah! <laughs> Ah, yes, yes. <laughs> like my glistening body. <laughs> like the eternal wanderers of the stars and skies that willow out in the wind. I just had someone put a headset on. Yes. Dad. <laughs> there is a communication from you from off world. From Asking me. for you specifically. <laughs> Must Conard travel, Dad? <laughs> you could still off my mind. You will, we will find out in time, but I, I, I'll bring you into the house. You must use the communicator. Shit. 
It's crude by um, most planet standards, but it does have video and sound. The sound is slightly crackly and the picture is a bit faded, but it is a communicator. And who else would it be but the naval officer that you served under <clears throat> during your term in the Star Marines? Wait, e hold up. Before we go there, is there one of those swivelly chairs in front of it? Yes. I would like to use my carousel skill on it. <laughs> That's Carus. Shit. All right, never mind. <laughs> it is. It was. It is E Man, as his uh, name is. Oh. E Man. <clears throat> and he doesn't look pleased to see you. Oh, there's a video. Yes, there is video. It's a bit faded, but it's there. Conad acknowledges him. E Man. Conad, how you doing? Conad nods. You like killing things, don't you? It's all right. <laughs> You want to kill lots more things. Does it pay? Pays very well, I'm assuming. Conard is your glistening man. Ah, Where do I go? That was easy. <laughs> yeah, that was very easy. Tell him you can kill things suddenly. I, I remember this from when I was... I... Cassine informs you that uh, he can get a shuttle to pick him up. Ah, get a shuttle. We'll get a shuttle down there. Fly over to the, the world ring. Go shoot things. Go stab things. Sound good? You yes. will need leave from your, your um, nomadic uh, tribal leader to go, though, Conard. Who's his I shall ask Duke de Ponce. No, wait, did we make up a name for him? He does have a name. He is called Ortho. All right, uh, I shall ask Ortho Hi. for leave. Then I shall see if I can go. Do you want to talk to my dad? <laughs> yeah, sure. Why not? Oh! <laughs> A man from the stars, an eternal guardian of justice and knowledge, like the like the ever eternal watchers of the sandy wastes. Conard is nodding solemnly in the background as his dad uh, regales his sir. Uh, I sit there quietly, and then at a moment of um, a small second of silence, go. What's the alcohol like over there, by the way? Piss. Ah, oh. I won't be visiting there anytime soon. Though. You uh, go over to your to Ortho. Yes. Goes over to Ortho. No, no, Sorry, that, that, was some, that was some subspace interference just then. Uh, uh, oh, you're going to broach the topic to Ortho. Conard, come, we, uh, propels this Chesterfield sofa-esque body across the sands, <laughs> opens the flap into Ortho's uh, hut, and goes, Conard. Hello, Conard. What? What can I do for you? The stars have called. I shall go and I shall bring back things and tools and the metals we do not have. That sounds reasonable. Don't die. Oh, all right. See you around. <laughs> as simple as that. Yep. yep. I've got a feeling that most things involving Conard are going to be pretty simple. <laughs> Good. It's all right. Uh, so, it takes a day for the shuttle to actually reach um, Kermimu. That's and right. uh, I imagine, <clears throat> Conard, you board. Oh, uh, yes. Yes. You are transported <laughs> off not to um, Leorm. Oh, 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 hold on. Uh, I saw Blade no, back, before going. Yeah? Hmm? I saw a blade, dude, and brought a sort of uh, yep. bladed weapon. You yeah, have a blade. Right. Yep. That's all right. Provides Gold you with hard. a... Uh, Kaltan, as he is called, provides you with a fine Kermimu blade to slay the enemies in the stars. Nice. Um, you are not transported to Leon. You are actually transported to Isal, the primary place where you will be able to purchase a good ship. You are all also transported to Isal. This is the place that uh, um, Talene says will be the best place for you to find a vessel. And for you are to contact him once you have one. Mm. And then he will arrange payment and uh, negotiate your uh, terms. He sends you to a reputable um, ship's um, shipyard. Most big ships are actually built in the star bases. 
So you have to actually stay on the star base, not planet side. This is all of us, yeah. All We've of you. You're up. finally met. You have now met Conard. So, oh, Edwin, so, I say, so yeah. Edwin, where is this muscle? Oh my Jesus Christ. You are confronted yeah. Conard. by... No insurance Conard. big enough for this man. No insurance. No Conard insurance. is built... Calm, calm down, Michael. It's, it'll be alright. Conard is built like a powerhouse don't, don't, of don't a warrior. Don't make eye contact. Don't make eye contact. Conard is built like a powerhouse of a warrior. Wait, wait, wait. Edwin, you're telling me this is the muscle? You asked for muscle, I got you muscle. <laughs> Fuck. You're so confronted does, by these three Does he people. always introduce himself by shouting Conard? Oh, you should see the way his dad talks. That's going to make stealth situations a lot more difficult. Conard goes around in turn to every one of them. Conard! Conard! Showing his face. You missed one? No, he already knows me. He already well, knows. All of it, all of it. Yeah, yeah, but it's, it's, uh, you, you meet yep. people. and yep. uh, None of these the people have time, their so face he's... covered, which is relieving for you. No, not. Yes, uh, you know, uh, man, that it is customary in uh, Kamimu to show your face to both your friends and your enemies. It is dishonorable to uh, conceal your face to an enemy before you fight. For this reason, I've taken off my goggles. Yeah, goggles is you usually fine. It's like total face coverings that are a uh. problem. You are, you are all basically outside the quite reputable dealer that uh, Talene has uh, recommended to you. Do you wish to go in? No, Edwin, would you mind, Edwin, would you mind telling your muscle to stay away from me? He's sweating all over the place. You, do you want to talk to the muscle, the muscle house and tell him to stop doing something? Excuse me, what was your name again? Conard. Conard. Look, I'm not intimidated by you. So, would you mind keeping your distance, please? Stick close to man if you have to stick close to anyone. Thank you. Conard listens, stares at Ye, waiting for him to announce his own I'm, name. I'm sorry. Tradition. The, oh, the, uh, yeah, you need to mention, you need to tell him your name. It's customary on his planet. Mm. My name is Yaland. Don't you forget it, Conard. Name's Michael. Michael what? Holton. Insurance salesman, not sure if you need insurance. You don't look like a man who needs insurance. First time I've ever seen someone who doesn't need insurance. Words insurance. fall insurance. from your mouth like shit from ass. Yaland <laughs> <laughs> almost loses composure, but turns to Conard and says... Man quickly walks into the shop to stop himself from pissing himself in the laughter. Would you mind, would you mind holding your tongue for a few moments, please? We're about to go in and do business. Something that I know how to handle. Meanwhile, I am inside looking at the pretty ships. You are presented not by ships, but by a desk. And a man behind the desk with a smile that sold a hundred ships and fleeced a hundred people what to buy What a nice them. desk. Almost as nice as mine, but still nice. Oh, damn it, I was hoping there wouldn't be a desk in here. He smiles. He stands up and he offers his hand. He's got a problem. Hand. He really has got a problem. The, uh... Red-headed man smiles a glistening white smile. Hi there. You right? You look like a man who needs a ship. My day. Yes, good afternoon. Good thing, too, or else you've come to the wrong place. Sit down. Don't forget How many of you insurance. are there? Four. Four there chairs, two? please. Any... Oh, I was going to say there was Some... chairs. Someone brings in two more chairs. Please be seated. I think Conard I remains I... standing, looms. There's not much uh, wood on his planet, so there's never any need for chairs. True. He uh, remains standing. So how not really you... sure what to do with it. Hmm? Um, I was going to ask how he poops, but I don't really want to I know. check out, I, I check out the desk. I look out like, over the desk, and I'm like, look how straight it is. Okay, it's Michael, straight. just sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Calm down. Okay. Sitting down. So what is your name? Uh... Good, sir. Oh, my name is not important. What's important is what I can do for you. Actually, your name is quite important because I'm going to be talking to you for the next uh, probably 20 minutes or so. Just call me your friend. I jump I jump up and I grab the man's hand and shake it profusely and I go, Hello, friend. Name's Michael Moulton. Michael Moulton. Sell insurance. Do you ever need insurance for your ships? You know, call me. Call me. I put a hand on Michael's shoulder and plant him firmly back in his seat. Excellent. 
Right, let's get to the nitty gritty. What do you want? Point out, and uh, how much are donuts? you willing to spend? 